Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming to uh, this panel. Uh, I know there's a lot of things you could be doing at DreamHack, so thanks for stopping by and spending time with us. Uh, I, my name is Jeremy, and I am, uh, I've been asked to moderate this panel. I do not moderate full-time, that is not my regular job, so um, I will do the best that I can to navigate this raucous crowd through a conversation about uh, the game industry and breaking in. I think what we'll do is probably start off by getting everyone to do a short intro. Uh, I think there's a lot of experience and perspective on this panel, so um, Scarlett, do you want to start with and maybe introduce yourself? We'll just go down the line. Sure. Hi, my name is Scarlett Dangerfield. I do human resources over at High Res Studios. I've been in the games industry for about 15 years now, um, and yeah, really focus on the recruitment side and getting new employees into the company. Hello, my name is Melissa Coleman. I'm an associate gameplay engineer at Alchemy Labs, and this is actually my first year into the game industry. So I'm also a Game Awards future class member as well this year. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Marcus Matthews. I've uh, been in the gaming industry for about almost 30 years. Um, and probably the biggest pain and fame that people know. I was the original senior producer on the uh, first NFL 2K and did 2K at the launch of the Dreamcast. And I've been pretty much doing sports games in various forms uh, since then. And, uh, most recently worked at uh, uh, Niantic, maker of Pokemon Go. Uh, there was a game that came out called NBA All World, where we used AR location based gaming to allow you to have new good league boards um, and recruit players in, in, in their real basketball courts and hoop. And currently now I'm at a startup uh, called Stash Pro PR. Uh, we have the only and best selling um, licensed uh, sports game on the Oculus uh, MetaQuest. Uh, it's called NFL Pro Era. And just here to take the there to lead um, our charge with NFL career and future sports games with VR. But I believe VR is the future of how people are going to experience some gaming and business in sports. Uh, I'm Warren Spector. Uh, these guys are all punks that have been making games for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I love basketball and I played your, your first game. Um, and uh, let's see, I've worked at a lot of studios. Uh, Tabletop stuff at TSR. I worked at uh, Origin and Electronic Cars. I worked at Ion Storm and uh, you know, where else? IDOS. Uh, I worked for Disney for seven years. Uh, I've done startups, built a lot of teams, uh, done just about everything you can do in the game business other than engineering. I leave that to the guy sitting right there. Uh, and uh, art. You do not want me touching anything involving art. Uh, and uh, like I said, I've built a lot, a lot of teams over the years, so uh, I hope I can provide some insight. It's always nice doing a panel with Warren where you feel like you're, you just haven't done games very long. Um, I had just quick context for me, I've been in the industry about 20 years. Um, I started my career um, at Cartoon Network Game Studio here in Atlanta, so that was a pretty cool bridge. I was an, inter I was an artist before that, got into games. I've worked at um, Podcast Studios, EA, uh, I spent some time at Bungie, uh, and now I'm Chief Creative Officer at a new game studio called The Believer Company. So um, that is my lens that I talk to these uh, fine people with. Um, I think I want to start with um, our paths you know, into the industry, right? I think there's, um, you know, what inspired you to get into games and sort of what was your, what was your break in uh, and you know, how did you get into uh, the game industry? Me first? Sure. Okay. Um, I think probably it's more than most people's story. I started playing games as a kid. It was mostly for a way to connect with my older brothers. Um, and then I really just happened to luck into the games industry. Sorry. Like, I let people down when I say that, but I can just, in the Wayback Machine, there was a post on Craigslist saying, hey, do you want to go work in HR and be able to wear jeans to work every day? And I said, yes. Yes, I do. That sounds great. That's a big draw. It really yeah. is, because I came from government consulting and government contracting before that when I was up in D.C. So, happened to luck into it over at CCP, getting to work on the World of Darkness franchise, and it's been a passion ever since then, so. So, mine is a very weird and windy path. Um, so, I, I was a kid, played video games, told my father I wanted to make games when I was a kid, and he said, go for it. And so, I was like, okay, got to go to college. What's the easiest way to get in the game industry? They said engineering. I was like, I hope I'm good at computers. And I was good at computers. Um, and then I graduated in 2020, which is the best year to graduate. And, <laughs> and then I was like, oh man, so I walked in an IT job. But I was doing a lot of games on the side, and that's 
go on the recommendation, do the whole entire panel. I did a lot of itch.io games on the side, from visual novels to 2D platformers, just post over itch.io. And then I got into an Xbox game camp. And when I talked to my mentor, she was just all like, so why are you working at an IT company? <laughs> she was, I was like, yeah, I need to build up my portfolio before I can work in the game industry. She's just like, you made all these games that I just start applying. And so I applied to several game studios. I applied to one and got rejected, and I felt bad, so I just randomly applied to another one, and they accepted me. So that is my path to the game industry. It's very random. <laughs> uh, doesn't sound, it sounds like a grit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, that sounds like exactly how you break into the industry. Because uh, my path was very indirect. Um, I got into coding computers back in middle school, in front of a Jacksonville, Florida, um, and, and, six, and I just got hooked with just coding. Of course, this was in my first home computer was in 1981, a Radio Shack computer, and I just every night would just start coding. And of course, if I think you're playing games, arcade games, and I was like, only games, Pac-Man, chess, whatever. And fast forward, I just ended up going to college, but it, back then, it was before the internet. Um, and so I went to Georgia Tech, uh, my brother was playing football for Caucus, then just went in and I majored in aerospace engineering, had an internship, and I hated it. I was like, I can't be a regular engineer. I like business and I like games, I like sports. So I switched my major to still state engineering and industrial, but every project I had, I did either was sports or was gaming. And I did a, one of my classes, a user interface class, I, everybody was doing banking software, I was like, I'm going to do a game caught the attention of one of the professors. He hired me part-time in an undergrad at NCR's advanced uh, user interface group and it was just prototyping touchscreen interfaces in the late 80s. I came to college in 86 and uh, we were doing all kind of small talk, we were doing neural network stuff back then. It was just amazing. And, and I was like, I gotta do interactive media, that's what I want to do. So I got lucky coming out of tech, there was a educational game group at IBM. And it was games, and I heard I was doing this stuff in college. And I came in and hired me as a production coordinator for kids. And I was like, that's it, that's close enough. I'm going to be a consultant. I'm not going to And that one did in terms of broadcast, and I actually had a games group back then, you know, CD-ROM games before the anime came out. And uh, they owned the Braves, and that was the first GDC I went to in 1994 through 3. And just that was my foot in the door. And, but on the side, I was doing sports games, so I was working at IBM and Turner. And one of my friends from uh, IBM went to Sega and said, hey man, I've got a sports producer job open. Send your resume. I think we're going sports stuff, all trying to do prototypes and stuff. And ended up getting an interview at Sega, talked to the head of sports gaming for like three, four hours, all the stuff I was going to change to do, and got hired, and that's my great. So the trick is, it's just, it's, un, it's unpredictable. It's a non traditional industry, it's a very small industry, but yeah, it's got to work with it once again. And it's, uh, it's funny you mentioned banking software that folks were working on. Uh, when I interview people, uh, they often say, well, uh, how secure is this job? How is this company? And I always tell them, if you want security, this is not for you. Go write bank software in COBOL or something. Um, but anyway, don't, don't even try to emulate how I got into games. Uh, it, it, I don't think it worked back then, except I got lucky. Um, now, I, you know, I was an obsessive uh, uh, tabletop player. Uh, I played D&D &D for the first time before anybody on this panel was born. And um, loved it. I fell in love with it the first night. And I said, uh, empowering players to tell their own stories uh, with each other and with somebody was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And uh, I started uh, in tabletop games. Uh, I, I dropped out of a PhD program. Uh, and my mom really cried for a long time and to make uh, tabletop games for Steve Jackson games. Um, did well enough there that I got the job, uh, you know, the godfather offer from TSR, the folks who made Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, they offered me $25,000 a year. Uh, couldn't, couldn't turn that down. Um, so uh, up there I got to, uh, I got to test uh, a bunch of the very early D&D &D licensed games, or AD &D licensed games. And uh, I hate them. I mean, all, all, all credit to the people who worked very hard to make them, but they were, they were simulating the wrong things. Uh, they were simulating the die rolls and the character classes, and you know, strength, dexterity, wisdom, intelligence, and all that stuff. And I, that captured nothing of what I thought was interesting in terms of role playing and storytelling. 
So uh, I had encountered Richard Garriott at Origin, uh, Lord British, who made the ultimate game that probably none of you remember. And uh, he got it. He wanted to make the kinds of games that I wanted to make. So I got a job at, at uh, Origin, um, worked on a bunch of stuff, um, notably, I guess, uh, Underworld, which was the world's first real-time 3D first-person fully textured game ever on the planet. And so I, I yeah, I thought that was a little world changing in my arrogance. Um, and System Shock worked on Thief, uh, the, you know, the early stealth game. Um, and then uh, John Romero came along and, and said, um, make the, the game of your dreams with no creative interference, biggest budget you've ever had, the biggest marketing budget you've ever had, and um, who says no to that, right? So I did, and I made a game called Deus Ex, um, which astonishingly people still care about and play 23 years after, after we shipped it. Um, uh, left there because I, I, I was, well, I, I was tired of being told what to do by corporate masters. And uh, so I started a company called Junction Point, did a startup. Uh, and uh, we made uh, a bunch of stuff there, and, and notably uh, Disney Epic Mickey and Epic Mickey The Power of Two. Uh, left there to go teach for three years. Uh, at the University of Texas, I built a game development program there, uh, and 100% of my students got jobs, by the way, every single one. Um, and, uh, and then I, I realized there were still games I wanted to make, even at my advanced age. And um, so I, I was going to do a startup when Paul Durath, a guy I'd known for 35 years, who founded a company called Looking Glass, uh, said he was doing a startup himself join me. And so uh, that's Other Side. And, and so I've, I've been working for Other Side ever since, uh, working on a variety of stuff I can't really talk about, uh, unfortunately, because I really want to. <laughs> um, and so uh, I've, I've hired, uh, you know, literally a thousand, two thousand people over the years. So I'll, uh, I'll try and communicate how and why and how I fail and, you know, occasionally. So basically our goal is to get Warren to talk about secret stuff. I think that's what he said. <laughs> well, I can't say a little bit, but this is See? Not, not it's working. working. <laughs> I, I think um, I, I'd love to kind of cut to the chase. You know, you know, a lot of people probably listening to this are genuinely wondering, okay, how do I, how do I get into the industry? So I think maybe even starting back with Warren on the other side, um, I know you have a lot of thoughts and it's probably hard to condense into you know, a few minute you know, talk, but I'm curious, you know, especially having taught you know, game design and, and, and just looking at the industry today, if someone asked you that question directly, you know, what, what, is, what is the answer from your perspective, um, you know, given, given today's landscape? Yeah, I, I am kind of a wordy bastard, but I'll try. Um, okay, so there are a bunch of ways to get into business. The, the cliched one is, is to come in and, and QA as a tester. I mean, every human is going to tell you that. And they're going to tell you that because it's a little bit less true now than it used to be, but it's still kind of true. Um, you know, uh, back in the day, there's a guy, Harvey Smith, who's now running Arcane, uh, an Arcane studio, uh, who was my lead tester on System Shock. Uh, I would spend, back then we used to work until 2 and 3 in the morning, and I would go down to QA, and I would talk to him about the game, what was working, what wasn't, what games he liked, uh, how they worked, and I got to know his design sensibility. And so I knew his design philosophy would match mine. Uh, there's a particular kind of game that, that I make and that I'm going to make until I can't make it anymore, which point I'll retire. And he wanted to make that kind of game, so I brought him into my, my group. Uh, and now he's running his own studio and doing better than I am. Um, there's another guy, Marshall Andrews, who I pulled out of QA to work on Deus Ex. Um, I could go on. QA is, a, is still to this day, I could give you more recent examples. In fact, that, that other side, one of our testers just moved into design last month. So that's still a, a pretty good way to get to know the developers, get, you know, so they know you, uh, get your foot in the door. So that's pretty good. Um, another way is to go to school, obviously. Um, you know, you can get a CS degree or a fine arts degree. Um, 
and th that will help you. Uh, a couple of things, though, um, especially if you're a designer, um, you, you need to get as broad-based an education as you can. If, if all you do is study computer science, you're not going to get a job with me. I mean, the quickest, and, and, and the quickest way not to get a job with me is to, when I ask you, what do you do in your free time? If you say, I play games, I say goodbye. Because I'm looking for people with a, who can bring more to the table than just, I play games, so I'm going to make other games like the games I play. But when you're in school, you, you do not know what you're going to need to know, I guarantee you, especially if you're a designer, but no matter what you are. I mean, that guy likes Django Reinhardt and musicals, and I love that. Um, I'm sorry, I keep pointing at you, John. Um, talk to him if you want to be an engineer. Uh, no, so get a, you know, a, a, how does a World War I biplane fly? How does a medieval castle work? Um, you know, name some conspiracies and, and what they believe. It just, I could go on and on. You don't know what you're going to need to know, so don't neglect the humanities. Don't neglect economics, behavioral psychology. Um, don't neglect your, uh, your communication skills. Um, all of those will stand you in good stead. Graduate from a, a dedicated game development program. Make sure it's a good one. Lots of them are taught by people who either have never made a game or haven't made a game in 15 years. Try and find a place, I know this is easy to say and hard to do, find a place where there are real working or recently working uh, teachers, okay? Uh, because the industry changes every, I, I say every three years, it's probably more frequent than that. Um, but graduate from a, a, a good school. Um, my my uh, art director on my last project uh, graduated from Full Sail. Um, one of the three best design leads I've ever worked with uh, on several projects graduated from uh, Digital. Uh, so going through school can be a, a good avenue. The other thing is, and this is true, students and, and people who don't want to uh, go or don't go to school um, finish something. Don't show me work in progress. Everybody can show work in progress. Students and, and even indies who want to make the leap, which is another way to do it, um, show me unfinished work. I need to know that you can actually finish something. Um, it, it could be a D&D world. It doesn't have to be digital necessarily. But show me something finished. Uh, there was one guy, um, this goes back a ways, but it's still true, um, at Origin, we were looking for an engineer. We called them programmers back then. I don't know why you guys became engineers. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he was applying for a job on the Ultima team, Ultima 6. And he came in and said, he gave me a disc. He said, this is uh, my version of Ultima 4. I reverse engineered it. And we played it. And he had reverse engineered one of our games without knowing anything about the game. We hired him. So show me something better. And I'll stop there. That's that's pretty much the range of ways I think you can you can break in there a lot of it. Yeah, um, yeah, I think a lot of everything Warren said is, is very valid. I think one thing that you know to put it in perspective, this is a very tough industry to break into. Um, we're a very small industry compared to other industries. If you go on Google, our industry is probably three to four hundred thousand people globally. Some of the largest companies in the industry, like EA and Ubisoft, were probably um, 12,000 at EA. Um, Nintendo has like six or 8,000. In perspective, companies like um, you know Google has 125, 30,000 people. You know, a third of the industry in one company. Um, Oracle has 160,000. Amazon is in you know closing in on probably four or five hundred thousand with their store for their delivery stuff. Um, of course, the Walmart's of the world, a billion plus, you know, and this is thousands of corporations with hundreds of thousands, you know. So it's like it's a it's a it's a small fraction of the technology and creative space. So everybody in this industry is one or two phone calls away from anybody in this space, um, and it's a very volatile space. And I tell people who want to get in this industry, as Warren said, and others, it's, it's very uh, it's a volatile industry. And it's a hit space industry. Um, so you have to look at this industry like you're in Hollywood, um, working in TV or film, where you might have a pilot that gets picked up, 
and it may get one season, it, it doesn't work, that, that TV show gets canceled, you get lucky, and it starts a lot, you come up with a hit TV show, you might be working for five, seven, eight years, it's very few people, um, including myself, has worked at one company for eight, ten years straight, you know, and Warren may have probably this place with Warren too, and all, everybody on this panel, it's very hard to stay in one company, very ugly, very volatile, and so therefore being small and volatile, we're, we're very, very um, results oriented in hiring. So as Warren said, you, we don't look for people who are trying. We look at people who have uh, proven that they really can hustle and they really have the grit to um, showcase that they can get stuff done in this space. Um, and so, you know, like myself, I was working on demos on the side, and so I tell everyone who's breaking this industry, you know, get the training skills you need, but you're going to have to showcase, in most cases, your ability before you get the job. Um, you know, and so you're going to have to work on demos, as, you know, and you have to work on your portfolio. Um, so if you're an artist, you know, you want to go to a local school that's known for putting game folks in there because we're a small industry. So if you go to DigiPen, Full Sail, SCAD, there are probably going to be alumni and relationships with the EAs and the bigger studios, at least, to get your foot in the door. Um, and you're still going to have to have a world-class portfolio because we're getting hit up every single day with people who are trying to break into the business. And so you got to be at the, just like in sports, you know, we're only trying to get five-star recruits or the top players to draft them to the team because we're trying to win. So your skills have to show up better than all the other artists that are trying to apply or the programmers who are trying to apply. And so, yeah, if you have a demo, you know, we look for that for for engineers. Okay, we we're, we're a project you worked on. We see what you've been doing, which, what are you, you know, what are your interests are. If you're a designer, uh, yeah, you design the game, show me what you've done. Um, or, you know, or, or, or try to get in QA and try to work your way up and do stuff outside of QA to show that you have those, uh, those skill sets. It's, it's a, it's a, you really have to kind of do extra things to uh, get your foot in the door. And then, because it's hit space, uh, just be ready for that ball tip. But you really have to, uh, um, I would say, just portfolio work. And one last point, uh, kind of like, uh, again, I keep saying one um, we also, oh, it, <laughs> um, at company, at, at, I'm at NASDAQ's Pro VR, we're, we're actually hiring um, multiple people, but we're also about to pull two people up from QA into kind of uh, entry level production and design roles to help us support us. So it's one of those industries where you just kind of get in. Find out what you want to do and how, and really hone in on that thing. You can focus on multiple things as well. I suggest have one specialization though. I specialize in engineering, but I have a certificate in game writing. So I have two things. One's a specialization, one is something I like, I enjoy doing. So, but it also makes you a little more marketable when you're applying for games and things. And I will suggest everyone learn game design, because even as an engineer, knowing how other things are designed and work help a lot of times in my current job. For example, my engineering title is specifically gameplay engineer, so it's a mixture of game design and engineering. So I highly suggest, like, really no game design, no matter what field you choose, knowing how a game is designed to work. That's my answer. Um, I kind of echo what everyone else said, kind of backing the lines, that makes sense. Um, I did have two pieces of advice, though. I would say always be networking, um, going to GDDA, um, going to game jams. Those are fantastic ways to meet other people in the industry. You can get feedback, try to understand what their path was, and hopefully get ideas from there. Um, and then for those that are a little bit more introverted, LinkedIn. Like you can always reach out to other artists or other programmers on LinkedIn and see if they want to do like virtual coffee and can learn kind of either, hey, review if, they, if they're willing to review your portfolio or just learn what kind of insights that they do have. I think it's fantastic. And then there are jobs in the games industry that don't make games, like myself in HR, there's marketing, there's finance, so there's also other people that are like game dev adjacent, which is a great way in, because I've definitely seen people come in through customer support, through marketing, that ended up switching over to production if they, that is their end goal. Lots of things. Warren, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I, I want to add, everything here was great, and I didn't think it happened, so that's, that's <laughs> pay attention. Um, two things, first of all, be persistent. You're up against some really stiff competition. Um, There's one guy I hired as a designer. Uh, I rejected his application, and that guy came back and sat in our lobby 
every day for like weeks. And ultimately I said, okay, come on in, I'll enter you. You clearly want this. Uh, that was pretty obnoxious, but in his case it worked. So find a way to be persistent without being obnoxious. Don't know. The other thing is, um, uh, it's absolutely true that you want to specialize, uh, be an engineer, be a designer, be an artist. But there, there are two things to bear in mind. You can be a generalist, or you can be an expert in a specific thing. Like what what we typically do. Uh, again, I'm going to point you to Joel. Joel can do anything. Okay, that's why he's a lead engineer. I can't draw. I can't draw. No, no, engineering wise, <laughs> engineering wise. But we look for gameplay engineers and rendering engineers, and uh, you know. Uh, Anyway, we look for specialized engineers. We look for riggers and animators and concept artists uh, and environment artists um, in in the part of the game world that I exist in. I mean, design, you know, narrative design, systems design. Uh, there, there are specializations, sub specializations, and in in one part of the uh, the business, the medium, we need specialists. Uh, and at the other end. Uh, especially at the indie level, uh, or at some studios that I don't know about. They're looking for generals, people who can wear a lot of hats. Make sure you, you know what you want to be, even within your, your area, what kind of artist you want to be. And then make sure you're, I mean, a concept artist doesn't really need to be applying for a, a special effects artist, you know, position. So uh, decide who you want to be. And then go after that. Don't assume I am an engineer, therefore I am going to get a job engineering, because that isn't that isn't the way it works in my studios anyway. Yeah, I would say being persistent while not being obnoxious might describe game development as a whole. <laughs> so write that down. That is very that is that is something we all strive for. Um, the other thing I would quickly add, just from an art perspective, since this, that's what I've dealt with for so long, the internet is an amazing measuring tool. Like if you are self-aware, you can ins you can get on the internet within a few minutes. You can understand, you can look at entry-level portfolios. You can really, st I mean, you can compare yourself. If you want to be a concept artist, you can quickly find out what some of the best concept artists working in the best studios have in their portfolio. Our station is great. You can instantly kind of see, oh, this person works at X studio, and if you're aiming for that studio or you have a, a goal to to do that, you can really measure yourself. I'm not saying be afraid to then apply, but I think. I think you're hearing what everyone is saying. Understand the context with which you're applying. And one of the other things too is the cooler the job, the more people want it. Like you have to know, if you think that job is cool, a lot of other people think that job is cool. Um, and actually, Scarlett, I'll, I'll start with you on this next one. I think you have a unique perspective with HR and recruiting. I'd like to flip it and talk about what you shouldn't do. Um, I, I know in your position in particular, you see a lot of um, you see a lot of people come uh, and, and try to apply. I'm curious to get everyone's take, because I know we have all seen, if you've hired any number of people, you've seen things that you're like, oh, okay, that's not good. But I think it might be helpful, you know, especially to, to just hear from people in the industry what, what, what you shouldn't do. Yeah, I think this is kind of on the, like, the being specific, or don't shotgun everything. So if I'm looking at a candidate and I see, okay, you've applied to be a VFX artist, and you've also applied to be our marketing coordinator, there's some flags that pop up. So I'm like, well, what does this person honestly really want to do? Um, are they going to be super passionate if they get either work? So I'm assuming they really want one job and they're just trying to get a job at that point. So just having a really good understanding of which direction that you want to go in. Um, lots of interviewing do's and don'ts. Don't ever talk bad about other studios. Don't talk bad about your current manager. Um, research the studio before you get there. Try to play the games if they're available. Um, I start with that. That's great. Um, as someone just graduated recently, I always say what you shouldn't do is let me think about this. I would say you shouldn't really, like she said, don't just shotgun apply, but you also you should really like look into the job and like I, I always suggest don't fully rely on getting a job in the game industry. I had an IT job for a few years before I jumped into the game industry. I didn't just go, I knew out of college, jumping straight into the game industry was not the smartest idea. So I was like, let me just have some backup plan. I don't need a 100% rely on living into the game industry, because A is volatile. At any point, you know, 
know, there was a ten, over 10,000 layoffs in the industry this year, I think. So at any point, you cannot have job industries no more. So have multiple skills that work outside the game industry as well, so you can have a living and a life. And that way you can be more selective about the studio you choose. For example, the studio I choose, I constantly ask, what was your crunch hours? How do you crunch? Because I, I had the luxury of asking that question because I already had a job on the side. So if it was something I didn't like, I didn't have to accept it. That's my advice. That's good. Yeah, I can speak mainly kind of towards um, hiring like producers and game designers kind of in my career track. Um, and in general, I haven't hired producers, um, sister producers, going back, you know, 20 plus years. Um, <coughs> one of the main things I look for, and I, there are, I kind of had to screen for after a few hires, was, and again, to go back to something Warren said, um, in gaming, this, this entertainment, is creativity, um, technology is always changing. And so you really, in a producer, or in design to a certain degree, kind of to be a jack of all trades, because you've got to kind of own the vision. you got to deal with the engineers, the programmers, um, management, marketing, um, you know, and so QA, you're dealing with everyone trying to keep the whole thing going, like a coach of a football team. And so what's, what's kind of burned me in the past, I kind of have a screen for, is actually with folks who are super hardcore gamers, and I hate to say that, uh, and don't do anything else but game. And what happened was, was that with that, with that focus just on playing games, it, in general, it kind of, it kind of, it, it, they struggle to um, be broader problem solvers because you have to deal with other inputs, the art teams, the other things. Yes, you need to be able to play the game. You need to understand the mechanisms that's going to make a game fun. But to get the game to be fun as a producer and a designer, you have to lead a team. You know, I got to get the programmers to buy in. I got to get the artists to buy in. I got to have to sell this to management on the direction and the schedule. And, and these set of features are the right set of features. And you need to know the principles of what's going to make a fun, interactive experience that touches people emotionally and get and, and some positive experience. So that's a that's a critical component of being a designer producer. But at the end of the day, <coughs> unless you're doing your own game, you're going to have to work with other people. And so your people skills are what's going on. And so hobby gamers, and that's all they do, sometimes might lead to being um, not, you know, not really leading to the type of leadership and um, and broader skills to be to get your games to where they need to be. It's not, it's not a, um, it's not, it's not like oh, or just know if they are hard for in the game space. But that, that shouldn't be the only thing. I need to hear other principles, you know, and other skill sets to complement that. But if we have because everyone who usually if you want to be in the games, you play games all the time. It's not that I want to, I want to, I want to make games. But it's like, if you watch a lot of films, that doesn't necessarily mean you have the skill sets to be a great film director. There, you, there are structures underneath the framework to making a great movie. Yes, you need to watch movies, you need to be a student of films, you need to study films. But just watching films does not make you a great director, and just playing games does not make you a great game producer or game designer. There are skills underneath that that also need to be up for you in the game. So that's, so that's, that's a filter. So just want to make sure folks don't over-index on that. As the main, as a good segue to be in the industry. Okay, first of all, get the name of the company right that you have <laughs> on your cover letter. Uh, I have seen that more than once, where it's obvious someone has shot them and someone else said um, Get the name of the company right. Um, but this isn't exact. Yeah, I'll, I'll put this in the negative. Try not to go work for a place that makes games you hate. Um, <laughs> No, I, uh, seriously, uh, like I, when I started Junction Point, we were working on an epic fantasy role-playing game and a modern-day ninja game with John Woo, uh, the film director John Woo. And uh, Disney came along and said, this is the short version of the story, do you want to make a Mickey Mouse game? And for a variety of reasons, I said yes. And I went back to my team and said, hey guys, we're making a Mickey Mouse game. And my, my number one level builder quit because he didn't want to make a Mickey Mouse game. My lead writer would quit because he, uh, he didn't, couldn't find that voice. And it was the best thing that could have happened to the project. 
for the team and for them. Okay. Uh, try and find. I, I know you have to get a job. Get a job anywhere. Okay. Just to be clear. But if you can, it's like me with Origin. I found a place that made the kinds of games I wanted to make, and I damn well got a job there. So try at least. Okay. Um, it's, we've talked. Everybody has talked about. Don't be a jerk. Okay. Um, I spent literally decades saying to myself, it's talent over team fit, talent over team fit. I can work with anybody if they're the best in class. And the reality is, if I put out a job rec for, for um, a, well, not, not so much now, at Disney, if I put out a job rec for a concept artist, I would get hundreds of resumes and portfolios. If you're not the best, you're not going to get a job. But the, the point is, it took me decades to learn, no, it's team fit over talent. So uh, try and find a place. I mean, one of the questions I ask uh, in interviews all the time is, how are you going to decide if this is the right place for you? And what I'm trying to suss out there is, is this going to be a good culture fit? Do I like the way they think? Do, do, are they looking for something like I can offer? So it's, it's team fit over talent. Remember that. Uh, don't be a know-it-all. Uh, I don't care if you've been making games for 30 years. You, you still have something to learn. I said this last night at the eSports thing. Learn every day. I learn stuff. I learn stuff. I made a change to my deck for my keynote about an hour ago based on a conversation that Joel and I had at Brent. Okay. He taught me something. Always be learning. Don't be a know-it-all. Uh, let me see, what else did I have? Uh, don't be intimidated. We're, we're all just, just folks who make games. You know? uh, don't be intimidated. Come in and be confident. Okay, confident. You want this? If, you, if, you, if I can scare you off in an interview, you had no chance of succeeding anyway. Come in and be, be confident. Uh, I already said, don't be mediocre. Um, and, and to your point, Rose, excuse me. Come in with, with that broader base that I was talking about. Um, I love musical comedy. That does not endear me to most game developers who just want to kill stuff. But I love musicals. And that led to a concept that I, I will tell you, because I may or may not have a client that's stupid enough to fund for this. I know how to make an interactive musical comedy game in a way that no one's ever done before. And that comes out of a love for something other than uh, Games I won't name, but you can probably figure out what they are because they're all about killing. Um, and beyond that, it, okay, if I ever had any gamer credit, I'm about to lose it. I am totally obsessed with Valorant right now. I don't know how it happened. I don't know why it happened. I am obsessed with it. And out of that, I got an idea that I can integrate into my musical comedy game that I will never get to make. <laughs> um, so. Just have that broad set of interests. Don't come in and say, I play games. That's not going to work. Okay? All right, anyway, that's, that's my point. I will say, really quick, um, when I was getting interviewed, I, my last interview, I thought I passed the technical exam and everything. My last part of the interview was actually like a vibe check. I had to go and talk to people from the company and see if they liked me. That was literally the last issue before I got hired. So it is based on team fit and culture. Yeah, I, I actually typically do the last interview in a round. That we have what, what are called panel interviews where people are interviewed for their skill set and to some extent their, their culture fit. Uh, I go last because I, I, don't, I assume that if someone gets to me, they are qualified for the job. I do what I call the serial killer interview <laughs> uh, to, to find out if there's someone that we really want to work with. So don't be a serial killer. I got two more points. Kind of off of Warren's, don't be a jerk. We have had people have come in for interviews where everyone loved them, and then the receptionist comes in, no, that guy was just complete ass to me. And we've chosen not to hire that person. So throughout the entire process, be mindful. Like every portion of right. the interview is to try out that point, right? Um, and then the other, um, don't rest on your portfolio fresh out of school. You have so many other people that are continuously working on their portfolio to get that job and treating their job search like a full-time job, you, you, you realize you're competing with them. So always be working on creating more pieces. Gear them towards the kind of jobs and the kind of art that you want to create. 
But if I'm just looking at the same run cycles that 40 other people have applied with from SCAD, there's nothing that's going to be like, man, this is the one to me. So. Yeah, I'll just double down on that really quick. Usually when you uh, open up an earlier in career position, you have a broad number of applicants. And 85% of those people have the same school projects. So you, you quickly get past level one and go to level two, which is what do you do in your own time? What have you done outside of that cycle? So that's 100% true. Um, Don't be a serial killer is also a new t-shirt that I'm going to get and <laughs> give Warren some money on that one. Yes. Um, I know we're, we're, we're quickly getting to the point I think we want to turn over for questions, but I did, I did want to throw out one more and anybody can choose to, to answer. Um, it's networking, right? I think cool. networking is, I mean, as, as you said, Marcus, this is a very small industry. Um, I love that we're only a couple of phone calls away from knowing somebody, and that's totally true, by the way. I work with people who know people that I worked with 20 years ago, so that is, that is not a, a, a misspeak. But I would say sometimes, you know, if you go to a great school, you have huge opportunities to network. If you're in the industry, you can network. Sometimes it feels like you're on the outside. You know, if you're a kid in high school or you haven't gone to a big school or, you know, you're just you're trying to see how potentially you can find out more. I'm curious if anybody here has thoughts about how to just generally network uh, and, and how to step into that world. I actually want to speak on this because I'm from a small town in Alabama. So the idea of I want to be in games, they're like, what? <laughs> Where are you going to go? Are you going to move to California? I'm like, no. But the pandemic was the worst and greatest thing that happened to me because I networked online. I did a lot of LinkedIn. I looked at groups, game development groups that I was interested in. For example, there's a group called Wholesome Games. And so I was like, okay, I like games that are wholesome. Let me meet those people and talk to them. There's Black and Gaming. They had a student section. I was like, I'm a student. I went to the Discord and just started talking to them. And I talked to one of the UI people who made God of War Ragnarok. And that's how I network fully online, especially during the pandemic. And they still can do it now. The, the benefit is that there's those groups are still out there. Um, I just found groups that really fit my niche and promote diversity because one thing I'm a big advocate for in the game industry as well. And it worked out. And you know, I was from a smaller town. I was eventually able to move to Atlanta and be here, but a lot of my network connections are actually not in Atlanta. They're in way in other places in the United States and some of the countries. But because we have the power of the internet and Discord and LinkedIn, use those connections. More on side of the Yeah, uh, there, there are a bunch of things to talk about about networking. I mean, one is you're a great place to, to network, you know. Um, what what I did was I, I have a particular kind of game I make. I, I will only make that kind of game. If you want to make Candy Crush, I'm not your guy. I would love to make an NBA game, but I don't have a basketball for free. Uh, I don't know how to make one, but that's why I want to make it. You heard it here. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. I, I, like I said, I don't know how to make it, which is why I want to do it. Um, anyway, uh, I found like minded people. Um, and uh, at a place like this, if, if you come up, I mean, I encourage. I can't believe I'm about to say this. Come on and talk to me. I'm just a guy who made a game. Um, but like, if if what you want to do is make Candy Crush, just stay away. Okay. <laughs> if, if you no, I mean, I mean, if you're, you're interested in the kind of games I make, and if you're interested in learning more about them, uh, and if that if you aspire to someday make that kind of game, I'm your guy. You know, uh, I, I'm at a point now. That I, it isn't exactly networking. Well, that is networking, I guess. But uh, mentoring is really important to me. I am, I am uh, old enough and have done enough in this industry that I can count on other people to execute against the vision better than I am capable of executing against it. And so I am as interested now in making people as I am in making games. And if, if there's someone out there that I can help, I'm, I'm willing to do some work to help. Some. <laughs> so, uh, like last night, there were a couple of folks who, who I don't know if they're in the audience, but they, they came up and they, they were brave enough to talk to me. And, oh, they're here. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, we talked for what, half an hour? Maybe easily. And, uh, and it was fun. I learned something. I don't know if they learned a the damn thing. <laughs> but, um, no, but it was an interesting enough talk about things that interest me based on the kind of games I make, that they, they have my email address. Yeah. Um, and, and I will, I, I make no promises, I told them to. Uh, I make no promises. 
But if, if you're someone who I think I can help, if you're not, A, don't come and talk to me. If you do come and talk to me, don't, don't be offended that I blow you off. C, if I give you my email address, I may or may not respond. I will not respond instantly, I guarantee that. And you might not like my response, or it might be too short to begin with. But anyway, the point is, uh, finding mentors, finding people like, I mean, Richard, Steve Jackson at Steve Jackson Games taught me. He was my undergraduate degree in game development. If you don't know who he is, go find out. He's a super smart guy. Uh, he, he's a tabletop guy. Uh, Richard Garrett, I can't tell you how much he taught, he taught me when I got to Orange. I, I owe my career to those guys. Doug Church, a secret master of gaming, who, if you haven't heard of, you should look him up. He is, sorry, he is the smartest human I've ever met. <laughs> the best designer I've ever met. One of the best, well, he's kind of a hack, but, uh, you, know, you know, he's a, I'm, I'm sorry, Doug. No, seriously, he's not a hacker. He's, he's a, a brilliant programmer. And, he makes the kinds of games I want to make. He has helped me make those games. I learned from him. Find mentors, not just networking, not just people who can help you get a job. Find people who can make you better. Okay, because you need to be better to get a job here. There are lots of people applying for, for your job. So networking, absolutely. Um, I. Talk to these folks too, not just to me, okay? I don't want 40 people around me after this. Um, but find mentors. And then when you've been working for 30 years, 15 years, 18 years, go and mentor someone else, okay? You know, when I interview, that's something I always ask. Um, who are your mentors? What did you learn from? Them? And if I asked around, would anybody tell me you were their mentor and what did they learn from you? So, mentor, I'll, I'll stop. Yeah, I know we've only got a couple of minutes, and I think we probably want to throw out for a couple of questions. One thing I would just call out, um, be nice. Not, not in this Q&A, you can do whatever you want in the Q&A. I'm just saying, in general, uh, because if Warren can be this nice and gracious, and has been in this industry that long, and is that personality, if you're a new designer coming up, I've actually, the, the most attitude that I've ever experienced is usually with younger people coming into the industry who are kind of convinced that they know it all. I'm not saying that's everybody for as long as they have, and as gracious as they are, I think that is that becomes our expectation. Always be learning, which is another t-shirt I'm stealing from more. Um, I think that's just keep that in mind as you interact with the people in the game industry. So, hey, one, one more thing. When I got to Origin, I had been working for six years at Steve Jackson Games and TSR, and I got to the, uh, to the, the digital game world, the PC game world, and I literally thought to myself, I'm going to show these guys what interactivity is all about. <laughs> and it took me two weeks to realize I knew nothing. <laughs> I had to unlearn everything I had learned. That's not true. Much of what I had learned in the, the previous six years. So don't don't come in, you know, being a jerk. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to thank everyone up here today. Uh, we are we are we nailed it. We're like 30 seconds away from the, the finish line. So uh, thanks to everyone here. Thanks to everybody for coming. And uh, I think. We'll hang around and answer questions as well. So thanks everyone.